social networks with uh, simple, uh, simple hypergraphs. So please give a short uh, introduction of you and then cost you your time. Thank you. Okay, so hello everyone. Thank you very much for coming to this presentation. I'm going to talk to you about newly developed Julia Library Simple Hypergraphs. Uh, I'm an assistant professor at SGH Warsaw School of uh, at, uh, at Warsaw School of Economics. Uh, the software you can see it's available on GitHub. If you Google for it, it's easy to find. Okay, so I start with explaining what is a hypergraph. So hypergraph is a generalization of graph. I assume everybody knows what a graph is. You have um, you have all those vertices that are connected by edges. And normally in any graph, an edge always is connecting to vertices. Now, for many real up world applications with regard to social networks, communication, or anomaly detection, this representation is not sufficient and there is a generalization of a normal graph to a concept named hypergraph. Uh, and the hypergraph is a concept of the data structure I just had I had there on the right, where V stands for vertices and E stands for edges when a single edge can spawn across more than two vertices. So I have an edge, for example, here you can see edge E4 on the right, and the edge E4 is connecting vertices V3, V4, and V5. So you have a concept of a graph when uh, you have a concept of a graph when a, a, a single edge is connecting several vertices. So this concept of graph is called hypergraph. The applications include uh, social data analysis. So for example, if I'm communicating, communicating with several people at once, representing this communication just as uh, an edges that I, if, so if I'm, sending a, uh, if I'm sending a message on social media, usually this message is reaching several people at once. So representing this as just an edges is, uh, is not sufficient and I will talk more about this. Or, we, uh, or when we have a, a social data, like we have a customer who is reviewing several restaurants and it's still the same person, if we just represented it by edges, we're just losing this information. And uh, so there's a need for such analysis in the area of social scientists, in the area of analysis where people communicate. So in order to uh, capture these dependencies, we, we developed the, hyper, uh, the simple hypergraphs library. The library is developed as, a, as an extension of functionality of light graphs. Uh, so I assume every, so it's one of the most popular Julia libraries, so I assume many people have heard of it. And uh, what, we, what we do, we represent in hypergraphs, we represent a data as, as, as a set of tool collection, as, 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 a, as, a, as a collection of vertices and a collection of hyper edges. We have decided to use data redundancy because of the performance issues. Uh, we have provided an API that is using uh, matrix-like notation, so we have over, overloaded operators, operators for, um, uh, for matrix manipulation. It will be seen in a minute. And we are developing several algorithms uh, to analyze this graph. So currently we are working on algorithms for um, hypergraph modularity and community detection. So we want to have on this hypergraph data, we want to be able to detect communities. And we are also uh, developing bridging points for normal graphs. So there are many algorithms to represent uh, hypergraphs as simple, uh, as, uh, as simple graphs. So one way of this representation is that when I have a hypergraph on the left, I can represent it as a bipartite graph, a normal graph. And we have made this representation as a views, so we are not actually copying the data, but this is a view, and if I'm manipulating the original hypergraph, my view is automatically changing, but those views are compatible with the light graph library. So for a short demo, and this demo is available, and this demo is available, um, uh, this demo is available online. How, how am I, how, how, how am I defining uh, a hypergraph? Uh, so I have data structure hypergraph, and this is uh, I, I can parameterize parameterize what type of I, I want to use for weights. Then if I want to define connections, so edges in this hypergraph. I ju I'm, just, I'm just manipulating this an array. So this is, uh, so this is the, not the array, but you see this uh, manipulation mechanism. 
and this is how this hypergraph looks like. Uh, mm, we are working now for um, for uh, for API for visualiz uh, for visualization of this uh, hypergraphs. Now I can have this hypergraph and I can transfer it to a bipartite view to a bipartite view. And this bipartite view is already light graphs compatible. So I have my own data structure and it's totally different, but then I can transfer it to something that is compatible with light graphs. And for example, I can use the, um, uh, the package Julia graph plot that is designed for light graphs and then I can, I can plot this graph. So I can use all of the power. I can also, for example, use f functions in light graphs for, f for, finding, uh, for finding the shortest path in the graph and so on. So all of this powerful functionality can be automatically applied to my, uh, to my bipartite representation of a normal graph. So here is the example of the two section representation uh, and, and so on. So we have, uh, we, have, uh, we have achieved this interoperability and now why does it matter? Why does it make sense to use hypergraph? Uh, so one example we have run it, uh, we have run it on uh, is the Yelp data set. So there, uh, so there is this Yelp data sets challenge when customers are reviewing restaurants and we have measured, uh, we have measured um, uh, various communities, community patterns in this Yelp data set and what actually we have discovered that if we represent this Yelp data set as a graph, we use some part of information on how the data is clustered. So if we want to measure, uh, if we try to, if we model uh, restaurant reviews as a graph, we have to lose part of the information. And if we model it as a live graph, uh, we, actually, uh, we can actually model it better. Uh, so moving, so it's a lightning talk, so I have 10 minutes only. So, uh, so moving to conclusions, uh, using hypergraphs allows us to fully capture the graph complexity. So for all those social, um, for social networks of analysis, uh, for finding patterns in the data, it's better, it's better to use uh, hypergraphs than graphs. So this is why we developed this library. Uh, this library allows to access the graph structure as an array, but I, underneath, of course, there are different, uh, different data layouts. And it allows us to use um, the, uh, the power of light graphs ecosystem by, provide, by providing uh, various bridging mechanisms. And of course, we needed to implement several functions starting with light, that, uh, so we, have to, we had to overload several of light graphs methods, but then at the, at the end, it works uh, seamlessly. Uh, and we have two pieces of work in progress. So one is a dedicated hypergraph visualization framework. And the second, the second work in progress, and it's, uh, and it's also very important, it's a set of algorithms for community detection in, uh, community de de detection in hypergraphs. Uh, so thank you. This is the end of my Latin talk. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to talk. Thank you. Hi, thanks for the good talk. Um, is, so simple hypergraphs are a subclass of simple graphs or what, like how does it fit into the light graphs type okay, hierarchy? So, uh, uh, so normal graph is a special case of a hypergraph. So hypergraph is a more generalized uh, ha structure. But there are algorithms, there are methods that I can transform a hypergraph to a graph and, uh, and it's a one-way transformation. So if I have a bipartite view, I cannot always, you know, uh, not, I can, I, sometimes I'm losing some part of information. So, uh, uh, so uh, graphs are a subset of hypergraphs. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, but, uh, but my goal was to use the sum of functionality of, from the light graphs library. What about the, the shortest path that you did? Was that... You said that you used it through the light graphs uh, okay, core so, code. So regarding the shortest path, if I have a, if I have a hypergraph like this, uh, the path being, uh, be, but the, the path between the edges is uh, the path between the vertices is using the hyper edges mm -hmm. to travel across the vertices. 
And actually, if I have a representation like here, bipartite representation, and I calculate the shortest path using the bipartite representation, so uh, to be more detailed, in the, the bipartite representation at the bottom, I have edges at, at, the, at the top, sorry, at the top I have edges at the bottom, I have, um, I have vertices, and if I find the road in such a graph, then I can immediately transform it to a hypergraph. So actually, so for many algorithms like finding shortest path in a hypergraph, I can just use the bipartite representation, find a shortest path on the bipartite graph, and then transform back the result to the hypergraph. And, uh, and because I'm util, I, I, I'm providing this integration with light graphs, I don't have to implement it myself. Mm -hmm. I can use the, you know, like, uh, a user of the library can use their implementation that is present in light graphs. Okay. So this was the idea, to exercise this, this integration of libraries. Thank you. Thank you very much.